Let's take a look at a Nitro OBD2 performance chip tuning box from Temu or Timu or indeed AliExpress or eBay or any of the online marketplaces. You might even be able to buy one from some unscrupulous garages and from some individuals who will be touting them in the pub. And the idea is that this version is for diesel cars. You also get a version for gasoline cars, but uh, in reality they can be used interchangeably in both because the theory is that they contain a huge database of vehicles and their engines. And when you plug it in, it communicates with the engine management system and uh, finds out what engine it's got, then uses a database parameters to actually fine tune it while monitoring your driving to actually optimize the fuel consumption of your vehicle and give you 35% more power, 25% more torque, but best of all, greater fuel efficiency. This one comes with a two year warranty, which is okay. Okay, I guess. Now, the instructions inside basically cover just uh, the typical location that you'll find the socket for this. If you go into your car, there's a diagnostics port for mechanics. Uh, very useful for you as well, because you can plug uh, diagnostic devices into it. But the idea is, in the vicinity of the steering wheel, you will find, hidden in the glove compartment or whatever, a little port that you can plug a device like this in, or a little handheld device, and it lets you access the engine management system, which is the point of this. So let me zoom down this. I will open it up. And... Uh, Technically speaking, this should contain a fairly powerful processor with a huge amount of database involved. If it does, then I will plug it into a vehicle and test it. There you go. There's a commitment. If it's like 99.999% of the others and just contains the most minimalist circuit board, then I probably won't. So what am I seeing here? I'm seeing a very small 8-pin chip. Does it have a number on it? No, it doesn't. An anonymous 8-pin chip, a little microcontroller perhaps. And uh, going by the pinout, that is the negative, the chassis connection. So let's get the power supply on. And this is the positive connection of the OBD port. So I'll just uh, hook up onto that. And we'll power it up and we'll see what it does. So the first thing I'm noticing here is there is a lot of activity going on. You can tell the processor is active. It's currently looking for the vehicle. If you press the reset button, and the reset button is very important. Uh, if you press the reset button, it resets the system. The reset button has multiple functions, but when you let it go, it will start processing again. At this point in time, when you see the green, yellow LED flash alternately, it is accessing your vehicle and uh, doing all its stuff. In this case, obviously, it's not because it's just connected to power supply. But let's uh, take a picture of this. It's a single-sided board by the look of it. Yep, and uh, we'll reverse engineer it and we can analyse the circuitry. One moment, please. OK, let's analyse this carefully and see how it interfaces with your vehicle's engine management system. So we have the two connections down here going onto the chassis or chassis, and there are the zero volt connections. We've got the 12 volt connection up here. Now, there are three networks commonly used with OBD2. Uh, the SAE network with the negative positive connections, that is not connected in this instance. We have the ISO 914, which uh, 9041, which is the low and the L and the K connection, that is also not connected. And we also have the canvas, which is the one we're interested in. Canvas low and canvas high, and they are also not connected. So it must be just communicating over the, the power lines then, presumably. We have the three LEDs. Um, we've got uh, a green one, a yellow one, and a red one, each with its own 2.2K resistor. We have this uh, mystery chip. I thought this was a 555 at first, but it turns out it's an LM358, which is quite interesting. So, right, we have a uh, four uh, resistor array here 105, 10, and 5 zeros. That's 1 million ohms. And then we've got a push button. Now, it's notable the push button has two positions, and you can, if it's mounted in that position, it's for petrol vehicles. If it's mounted in this position, it's for diesel vehicles, although they can be interchangeable. If you put both switches in, it will deal with both vehicles, and if you push hold, push and hold both at once for three seconds, it will switch into electric vehicle mode, which is very useful. Uh, well, let's take a look at the circuitry. The circuitry is very straightforward and it is actually really interesting because of the way they've used the LM358. The LM358 is a dual op amp. The second part of this chip is just not connected. None of its inputs and output are connected. And here are the four resistors in that uh, parallel array. Everything is used very efficiently. So the 12 volt rail and the 0 volt here, we've got two connections going to the chip to power it. 
And then an op amp has two inputs and an output. The inputs are compared to each other, and if the voltage is higher in one than the other, the output will change state accordingly. So in this instance, they've got a potential divider which provides roughly 6 volts to the positive input, but that will sway either towards a positive rail or negative rail depending on the polarity of the output. It's a technique called hysteresis, effectively. Then the output also charges this capacitor, which is quite a low value. I measured in circuit 220 nano, which is not necessarily guaranteed. But the idea is that when this output is high, it's charging this capacitor up until this reaches the rough voltage of that. But because this has gone high, it sways the voltage up towards a positive rail. So there is a fair amount of time involved in getting there. And then when it reaches there, it will go low. And when it goes low, it will start discharging this capacitor. But because it's gone low, that also biases this line slightly to the negative rail, so it actually drops the voltage threshold. So the voltage threshold is fluctuating up and down all the time. Without this resistor here, it would charge capacitor up until it was just roughly between the uh, two supply rails, and it would effectively just, the output would just stick at about half the supply voltage. But in this way, they've created an oscillator with the output going positive and negative alternately. There's a green LED and a yellow LED and a red. The red is lit all the time. Uh, the green LED lights when this is negative. Uh, the yellow LED lights when it's positive. So effectively, because this is toggling all the time, the green and yellow alternate backwards and forwards. When you take control of the situation by pressing the reset button, which is probably used to void warranties uh, by basically discouraging people from making claims, you can say to them, ah, you're, it's not working for you. Did you press the reset button? No. What reset button? Oh, there's a reset button inside. If you grope through the hole, you'll feel and you'll hear it click. Uh, press and hold that. And then your vehicle will have to learn again. So they can basically postpone giving them their money back, etc. That's almost certainly what it's for. And then uh, three months down the line, they contact again. They say, try holding it for 10 seconds and then give it another three months. That It's just going to be used to actually avoid, avoid giving people their money back. But as you can see from the circuitry, this is just an LED flasher, as they always are. It's probably just as well it doesn't connect your vehicle because the vicinity of these connections, if they'd actually been terminated onto pads in the vicinity of ground, as ha has happened with some of these units, if there are solder blobs bridging, then say for instance solder blob bridging from uh, here onto here or there to there, People have bought these and they've plugged them in. Their vehicle has immediately stopped working. The answer to that is to, it won't, shouldn't damage the vehicle. The answer to that is to unplug the module. And then after a while, after a few starts, it should get rid of all the errors and the little money light in your dashboard should go out. So the Chinese do have a name for this type of device. Uh, Shi Sheng Shui, Idiot Tax. It basically, it dupes people into buying them, uh, and it's a way of making money with no liability. And uh, some, well, you look at the reviews of these, and apart from videos like this, you'll see people that say, oh, I plugged it in, and definitely I can feel the performance improvement. And if they do, then this is good, uh, because that uh, is the placebo effect of these devices. But there we go. The Nitro OBD2, it's a different variation. It's an interesting variation. I love the fact that they've used the op-amp and it's a very good demonstration of the op-amp with its uh, bias and uh, feedback actually providing an oscillator function. But ultimately, it is just a scam device, but quite nicely made and not too expensive. So really just a bit of fun.